everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Mike the Principal podcast. We got a great episode lined up for you today. We're going to be talking about building teachers up, what educational leaders can do to help build up their instructional staff, really all staff in their building. Um, I'm Michael Meachin, a former high school principal working to support educational leaders to help move their schools forward, uh, really looking to impact all students and support all teachers in their buildings. That's what I'm here to do. Uh, I'm excited to, to chat a little bit about educational leadership with you on this episode. Uh, don't forget, as always, if you like what you hear, please click the subscribe button uh, and share this content with your favorite educator friends. It is super helpful to get the word out and also just share some of the thoughts uh, that we have that, that will really help move uh, education forward. So again, uh, be sure to click that subscribe and like button and share it with your favorite educator friends. It would be greatly appreciated. As I said, today's topic is about building teachers up. I am really excited to take a deep dive into this topic in particular. Uh, you know, you've, if you've heard me talk at all, I think that, that teaching is by far uh, the greatest profession in the world. Uh, it is um, just incredible work that, that teachers do and they need to be lifted up in every facet uh, of their work in, in any way that they possibly can. And I'm going to talk, break it down today uh, into four different uh, areas. The first one is a boss mindset. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about feedback before evaluation, uh, breaking down barriers, and then also deflecting and supporting. So I'm going to touch on those, uh, those areas. And really, this is a really important message for anybody who is currently a principal, uh, currently an assistant principal, uh, maybe in the district level leadership, even if you're thinking about becoming an educational leader, this episode in particular and how we talk about building teachers up is so important in the work we do as school leaders. And I want you to hear me because I want you to um, understand that I'm coming at this from a lens of, of having done this work, right? I talked about in the show intro, I'm a former high school principal. I have done this work. Schools that I have led have had some of the highest culture survey scores uh, when compared to national norms uh, that you can find. And the reason that those, those scores existed was not because of me. It was because of the culture that the school built. And I helped lead that work, but I was just a piece of that puzzle. But the strategies that I'm going to talk about today are how you can build teachers up within your building to really help in lifting them up and building a culture. Everything is tied back to, to school culture. I'm a really big uh, proponent of school culture work and believer in school culture work. And I want you to, to be very clear on that and hear me that this work is so essential to the work that we do as educational leaders. So I'm gonna jump right into the first topic. The first topic is about a boss mindset. And so often I work with school leaders or, or reflect with school leaders or talk with school leaders um, or have led other school leaders and they have this mentality of that they're the boss. Okay, you're in a leadership role, no question. But if you take a mindset of like, I'm the boss. I actually, I actually worked for a school leader one time that had a hat that said, I'm the boss. It, that is just, what are we doing here, right? Like leaders are in support of everything that happens in their building, okay? They're not the boss of everything that happens in their building. If you come at it with that mindset, sure, you might sign off on paperwork and give approval and do all of those things that leaders do. But if you come at it from the mindset of like this power trip mentality where you're the boss, you're gonna be in big trouble. Uh, leaders will not... Um, Leaders will not thrive <laughs> when you attack it that way. And leaders lead from the front, right? We lead by example. We do the things that we think should be done and we, and we, we demonstrate those things by example. In classrooms, you should be engaging with students. You should be talking with teachers, both formally and informally, chatting them up in the hallway, checking in with them in the lunchroom. All of those things that show that you're here to support. We're not, it's not about being a boss. It is about, and it's not about being in charge of people. You know, at some schools that I had, I had, I had, you know, 180 direct reports, but that's not what it's about. It's about lifting everybody up. It's about leading and supporting 
Otherwise, you will have no one to lead, all right? That's so essential. So show them that you have their backs. That's so important in the work that we do as school leaders and breaking down um, you know, this, this mentality or what I call a boss mindset that you, you, can't, you can't be successful, a successful school leader with that mindset. The, the, the second thing I want to talk about is feedback before evaluation. Every teacher that is in my schoolhouse is about, is about an investment, right? Like every teacher that I've brought into my building, we are investing in them to bring something to the students, to the school, to our culture, to our community. So I look at them as investments. So I, I hate it when I hear school leaders talk about, well, this teacher's awful, or this teacher can't get anything done, or I've asked them a million times, or they write referrals all day long. My question to you as a school leader is, what have you done about it? What have you done to support that work? Other than just saying that this is, this is what it is, X, Y, Z, right? What have you done specifically and intentionally to support this teacher in their work? Have you thought about that? What have you done about it to help support? How are you building up your investments? If I looked at every teacher in my building as an investment, I wanted to pour in as much as I possibly could to them to grow my investments, right? Teachers, human capital that we have in our buildings is no different. We have to look at them as investments and how can we help support? And feedback is the key piece to help people grow. And I mentioned at the, the top of this topic, right? Feedback before evaluation. You have to be moving away from evaluative practices that are, are gotchas. That is not what it's about. When I was leading schools, I used my evaluation system the bare minimum. Whatever we needed to make sure we, we got done for the year to meet the requirements for my evaluation. And the reason that I did that was because instead we built a culture of, of authentic feedback that provided support for teachers and gave them constant and immediate feedback on their work. Most of the time, that was informal in nature. We completely disconnected it from our evaluation system so the teachers felt comfortable with it. It didn't feel like an I gotcha. I was able to provide critical feedback, critical conversations to my staff in order to build them up. Include their voice when you develop these things, right? Be transparent and don't be afraid to shift. It, it was not uncommon for people in my building to really understand where I was at at any given time. I was incredibly transparent with the teachers and the staff that I had in my building. They knew that I was there to support them. They knew that I would provide feedback. They also knew that I expected feedback from them as well. It was, it was how we built a culture of, of real, the ability to have real conversations with one another without having to worry about gotchas. Okay, and including teacher voice and staff voice in this process is so essential. They, again, they need to know that you have their backs. That, that piece is so essential to the work of school leadership. It is really, it's what we need to do um, as we're leading schools. The other piece is about breaking down barriers, right? So the third thing is, is breaking down barriers. If teachers need something, your job as a school leader is to make sure that they have it. You need to make it happen. That's our job. They do not want to hear I can't or I won't or I don't or it's not my job. Teachers are not interested in that. When you're a school leader, I said, I said no to very few things. If we could figure it out and it was about kids, we made it happen. Okay, let me say that again for you. If we could, if, if it was an idea that kept students front and center, I rarely said no. If it was about kids, we figured out a way to make it, make it happen. It's so essential to the work as we move forward. And if we couldn't answer why we were doing something, we stopped. We stopped doing it. If we couldn't answer the essential question, why? Does it have purpose? Does it have a connection to the work that we are, 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 are leading? 
in our building. If there's a barrier in the way, it is your job as a, as a school leader to help break that down. And, and I would argue that it's essential for you to keep the, the frame of a teacher when you're making these decisions. You, we have to stay in that mindset as school leaders, what it was like to be in a classroom, what it was like to have a, a, a caseload of, of 150 kids at a high school, or what it was like to have 25 elementary students with, with seven students with IEPs and, and all types of different supports and needs. That job is a, in tremendously difficult. So our job as leaders is to break down whatever barriers are getting in the way of teachers doing the work. Again, it comes back to having their backs. Do the people in your building know that you are there to support them and you will break down whatever barrier is in their way? The fourth thing is about deflecting and supporting. Too, just too often, we talked about taking things off of teachers' plates and then we immediately put five additional things back on their plates. We are not here as school leaders to check the boxes. We are here as school leaders to affect change that is going to move our school forward. That's what we're here to do. So you, it is your job as a school leader to take what comes and deflect it. You are the first line of defense for your instructional staff. So you take what comes from, from, from federal, state, or even local boards, and it is your job to deflect that. It is your job to filter that. It is your job to adjust that so that it meets the needs of your school, of your teachers, of your students. That is your role as a school leader, to deflect and support. We can't all, we are, not, schools are not interested and do not need any yes men or women. We are interested in, in people who are going to keep students and teachers front and center and make their decisions based on that. And I took heat sometimes for that. It's not easy to step up and be committed to your decision because it's in the best interest of the school, of your teachers and your students. That is not an easy task. I understand what I'm asking you to do. But I also want you to think about who is going to challenge your ideas and your decisions when you are keeping students and teachers front and center. Oh, I'm sorry that I increased enrollment in rigorous classes. Oh, I'm sorry that I figured out an innovative way to provide additional supports to kids during the school day. When you keep students and teachers front and center, that's the work. That's the work. So how are you deflecting and supporting teachers? Again, do they know that you have their back? So again, get rid of that boss mindset in your building, in your school district. Think about fee how you can create a system of feedback that is separated and disconnected from evaluation. Teachers do not like that word. They, want, they are interested in feedback. How can you do that? What are you doing to break down barriers in your buildings? And how are you deflecting and supporting so that you can make sure that teachers have what they need to impact the students that are in your building every single day? So those are four things that I, I just think are really essential to the work of school leaders today. And I just, I needed to talk about them. I wanted to share the, those thoughts with you. Uh, they worked for me, those strategies I talked about today, they worked for me as a school leader. And I know they'll work for you. So Again, um, as always, thanks so much for checking out Mike the Principal Podcast. I appreciate you listening and tuning in. Uh, for all those folks who subscribe to our podcast uh, or watch us on YouTube, I really appreciate that as well. Be sure to hit that like, subscribe button on whatever platform you listen uh, to us on, and it is greatly appreciated. And don't forget to share it with your uh, education, favorite educational friends, your teachers, uh, even even PTO parents. It doesn't matter who it is. If, if you're connected to schools, you can absolutely take something away from this podcast. So be, be sure to, to like us, subscribe, and go ahead and share it. Uh, until next time, we'll talk to you later. See ya.